If you know me, you know that when I'm getting ready for Sunday morning, a lot of time passed. By the time I get to Sunday morning, a lot of time has passed and that Holy Spirit is speaking to me about specific things, whatever they might be, and a lot of time have passed and I've, has passed and I've put down bullet points and whatever He says to me, I'm often driving down the road and saying to my phone, I don't want to say it now, but I call out my phone by her name and I say, make a note. So she'll make a note. If I did it right now, she'd make this note. But I'll say, make a note. And she'll make a note. And then I begin to compile those and put those things together as Holy Spirit uh, begins to uh, help me understand how to say what He's saying, not what I'm saying. And that's always important to me. It's very important to me that when I'm speaking, whether it be on a Sunday morning, whether it be in a class, whether it be to you as an individual, it's important to me that you hear the voice of God within my voice. Just in case I interject things that are me. What I love about the Father is He's able, if we have ears to hear, to let you hear His voice within my voice. To clear up what, not, what might not make sense outside of that. Do you understand this morning? So today I ask again, Father, as I speak this morning, as I share what You have put in my heart as I share the expression of the vision that started back in 1999 as I begin to share this and all the ways that we've been visited by you here at the Rock of Central Florida. I pray today that as I lift my voice and as I open my mouth, if there's anything coming out of my mouth that comes from Steve, don't let the people hear that. Let every ear hear Whatever comes out of my mouth that is from you. Let every man and every woman interpret the heart of God and what you want to release to this people today. Father, as I look around me, I see the glory of God revealed in the faces of each one sitting in these seats today. As I recognize the reach that we have online, every Sunday morning and throughout the week. I recognize Your glory being revealed to people in cities, states, in countries. Many we will never go to, but Your Word is reaching them. I see Your glory. Father, every day throughout the week, in the children that we teach, in our Rock Academy, and in the Kids Rock, I see Your glory being revealed and how You are causing the Rock of Central Florida to be a beacon of the faithfulness and goodness of God in a land that has seen a lot of counterfeits, but has searched For the genuine. I've seen your glory be revealed. In everything that we do, Father, I pray, whether it be this morning or tomorrow or the next day or the next day or a year from now, in everything we do, let it never be about us. Let it always be about you. Let it always be the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, about the God of Jacob, about the God of Steve Parker, about the God of Chris Myers. Father, let it always be about You and Your purpose. All glory. All glory is Yours. Amen. Amen. So, we kept the title of this message, this series, this service today, uh, I'm Not Crazy, and then called it The Visitation of the Lord. Because what I'm going to do today, some of you you already know, because I've had conversations with you through uh, either this week or this uh, previous week, Um, I've shared some things that are going on here. But I want to today, was the right time that Holy Spirit put in my heart, 
to share with the house, with this ministry, with the people that call this place home and will at one time call this place home, to share with you what kind of God we serve. See, I wonder sometimes, what would happen if God visited us and demonstrated His hand moving in our lives, but we didn't recognize His visitation? We chalked it up to good timing, good luck, good whatever. I wonder if... He visited us and we chalked it up to those things that are contrary to Him. I wonder if there would be a second visitation. I don't know. Because I have never, personally, counted anything that the Father has ever done of any consequence in this house as good timing or good luck. Or because of meeting the right person. If I believe this, and I do, if I believe that the steps of a righteous man are ordered of God, if I believe that the steps that a righteous man takes are on purpose and not just serendipitous, they're with intent. If I believe that my steps are ordered by God, then I have to also believe that you and I are sitting here gathered together this morning because we have a purpose together this morning. So we're not crazy when the visitation of the Lord leads us to greater things that require us to have faith. Do you believe that this morning? Let me say it again. We're not crazy when the visitation of the Lord leads us to greater things that requires us to have faith. Continued faith. It's one thing to have a faith, have faith for one thing. But it's another thing to keep walking in faith when the first thing I believe for has been fulfilled. If I continue to walk in faith and my steps are ordered of the Father, a fulfillment in one thing is not the end of all things. Did you hear what I just said? Because one thing has become complete does not mean that all things are finished. There is a need to have continued faith. I want to read to you this morning a letter uh, that we sent out this week, an email. All of you got it. I changed the wording in what I'm about to read just a little bit. But everyone in this building, you should have gotten it. If you don't, you need to go on the app, go to your profile, update your information so we make sure you get it. But this is what it said. At The Rock, we are a living and active testimony of God's faithfulness to those with unwavering vision and passion. Stop right there. I want everybody to stand, please. Put your hands on your head. Say this with me. Say, Father, I am a seer. I'm a witness, and I'm a participant. Today I choose to see, and today I choose to hear. There are no distractions. I'm paying attention to your hand among us. In Jesus' name, amen. You may be seated. At The Rock, we are a living and active testimony of God's faithfulness to those with unwavering vision and passion. Our mission is to serve the community of Central Florida by equipping families through kingdom teaching, exceptional child care, and faith-based education. Our facility, this facility, has been operating at maximum capacity for several years now, and changes are coming. In fact, preparations are being made even as we speak to move into our next phase of growth. This phase includes constructing a 13,000 square foot all-purpose facility on the east end of our current property 
that will enable us to better serve the increasing growth of the Rock Church, the Rock Academy, and Kids Rock Early Learning Center. We are determined to support families by being a place where children and families can reach their full potential spiritually and naturally in a safe and a healthy environment. I want to point you to Isaiah chapter 54 verse 2 this morning. And Isaiah says this. He said to the people, he said, Enlarge the place of your tent and let the curtains of your habitations be stretched out and do not hold back. Lengthen your cords and strengthen your stakes. This was an exhortation to the people of God to get ready because exponential growth was on its way. So again, he said, Isaiah said to them, he said, Hey, enlarge the place of your tent and let the curtains of your habitations be stretched out. What you need to know is what led up to this, and I can't get into all the details, but what led, up into the, what led up to this was a season where the children of Israel had begun to neglect the Father. They'd lost faith. They'd lost confidence. Everything was about them. It wasn't about Him anymore. It was all about them. But then there was a repenting that was going on. Suddenly there was a revival of an, of a, of an understanding, a revelation where they understood and knew, we didn't do anything. We can do nothing without the Father. And they begin to say to him, Father, we repent. And through that, the Father began to look at them and say to them, Now that you have your eyes fixed correctly, enlarge the place of your tent, let the curtains of your habitations be stretched out, and do not hold back. Lengthen your cords and strengthen your stakes. This was an exhortation to the people of God to get ready. Again, because exponential growth was on its way. The Father was saying, He was asking and making a statement at the same time. Are you ready for what's about to happen? Today, those same words spoken by the prophet Isaiah are also an exhortation to you and me, the families who are the rock of Central Florida. It is no secret that we have grown and continue to grow in every area of this ministry that the Father has entrusted to you and me. It's no secret. This room, they say, they say, you know, my degree is in finance, but in that degree plan and that degree process, one of the things that we learned was when a building reaches 80% capacity, you've stopped growing. You will not grow anymore. When any, not just, not just, Churches, this was a secular perspective. Once you reach 80% capacity, it's near impossible to continue to grow. We have defied that statement for years in this house. I look around on Sunday morning and we are a full house. You walk around this place on any given day. If we brought all the children in here, there's probably around 40 kids in Kids Rock right now. If we brought all those kids in here right now, we wouldn't have enough chairs to seat them. Thank you, Father. How did we get here? I want to take you on a timeline of God's visitations to the Rock of Central Florida. Some of you are aware of these time, this timeline. Most of you are not. So let me just share some bullet points about what the Father has done and then what comes next because there is no next without you and me working together. Together, we depend on the Word of the Lord. We trust His Word. We trust His promise and we trust the vision that He has given to us to be able to do what's next. So let me share with you what happened. So... In July of 1999, Kim and I were sent by faith from Panama City, Florida to this land. There was a lot that happened during that season, but Apostle F. Nolan Ball was the senior minister at the Rock of Panama City. He's my spiritual father. He passed away a few years ago, but he was my spiritual father. He was very... um, I don't want to dig into it a lot this morning because there's so much to cover, but he was... Without him, this would not be happening today. 
So he came into my office one day when I was on staff up there at the church in Panama City, and he walked into my office. He said, hey, you got time for lunch? And I said, yes, sir. I've been on staff there for almost seven years. And I said, yes, sir, I do. Oh, my, what are you going to say? <laughs> no. I said, yes, sir, I do. And his favorite place was Arby's. So we went right down the road. We went to Arby's. We're sitting at Arby's. And, and as was always the case, he and my wife have, have this same anointing. They never order fries. They just eat everyone else's. <laughs> so we sit at the table in Arby's, and I order my Arby's roast beef sandwich combo with some curly fries and my tea. Or I don't think back then they had curly fries. I think it was just regular. And uh, my tea, and, and I'm sitting there at the table, and he ordered a roast beef sandwich and, a, and a, whatever he drank, a, a Coke or soda, whatever it was. And he ordered that, and meanwhile, we're just sitting there, and we're just this small talk, and he'd bite a sandwich, reach over, grab one of my fries, and, and um, you know, I mean, he paid for it, so he could eat them all if he wanted to. And we're eating, and then somewhere in that conversation, he said, son, he said, it's time for you to go. And I said, it is? <laughs> he said, you're ready. He said, I'm going to give you two choices. I'm going to give you the leadership because at some point I'm going to be stepping away from this ministry. I'm going to give you the opportunity to pastor, become the senior pastor of the Rock of Central Florida, I mean the Rock of Panama City. Or the other option is I will send you somewhere, wherever you feel like the Lord is calling you, I will send you there and you will establish a work there. But it's time to go. And I said immediately, I said I know exactly what I want to do. I don't want to be the senior pastor of the Rock of Panama City because I don't want to assume or accept what someone else has built. But in my heart, I know what I am. I'm a pioneer. I build up. I establish. I grow people. And he said, then I want you to find that place that the Father's calling you to. So Kim and I went hither and yon, and long story short, we went to three different places. We ultimately, we came to Central Florida, and we were driving in on the turnpike one day, and as we were driving on the turnpike, it's raining. My son, Joshua, is a little baby. He's in the back seat. He's about six months old, and he is screaming and crying. The rain's falling down. We all have to go to the bathroom. We're in a traffic jam, and Holy Spirit said to us, this land is your bread. It's a true story. Everything that could go wrong on that trip went wrong except for the promise of God. He said, this land is your bread. Kim and I were thinking, we don't know anybody here. We don't know where to begin. But he said, this land is your bread. That was in July of 1999 that we were sent here. On August the 8th, we had our first service in our living room in Deltona, in our home, on 779 Superior Street. We had our first service. And of, in that service, there, was, there were 12 of us that were gathered together that day. And we watched God begin something that has grown into this. On October 31st of that same year, 1999, we had our first public service at the Homewood Suites in Lake Mary. On February 6th, 2000, we moved into a 3,600 square foot storefront on Highway 1792 in Sanford, which... Some of you, that was your first time visiting us at the Rock. How many of you came when we were in that location? Hold your hand up. That was your first time. We moved in there October 6th of 2000. We continued to grow, and in November of that same year, we doubled our space and occupied then 7,200 square feet. Tore down the wall in between the two spaces, took over the second area, and continued to grow. Then in January of 2001, just less than a year later, my wife and I were invited by someone in the church to go to a restaurant that was out in Titus or out in uh, Mount Dora. And they invited us to go to this place we'd never been called Dixie Stampede or Dixie Crossroad. Dixie Crossroad. So they invited us to go eat some shrimp, rock shrimp, Dixie Crossroad, which anything seafood, invite us to seafood, we're with you. So it's January 1st, we're driving, we leave, we lived in Deltona, and so did they. 
We leave, we're driving down 46, there was nothing down, this road was barren at that time. We're driving down 46 and we pass this land right here, this area right here, and this thing is full of trees, you can't see 20 feet into this property. And we're driving by and I look over at that land and I looked at my wife and the people that we were with and I said, man, what a great, that would be a great place for the Rock of Central Florida. It wasn't for sale. And I said, man, that would be a great place for the Rock of Central Florida. We started talking about something else, kept driving, went to eat, came home. That was it. We continued growing and serving Central Florida and we served the homeless and hungry with a passion to reach more people for the kingdom of God by being a demonstration of integrity, honor, and faith. Many of you helped us pack 600 bags of groceries twice a month for a very long time and stand out there and give those to, the, to those who are in need. I remember one time a particular gentleman said to me, he said, I don't understand why we're giving groceries to people that are driving Lexus. They pull up in a Lexus. And I said to them, I said, let me just help you understand from the kingdom perspective. You have no idea that they might have lost their job Friday. Their only transportation is a car they're trying to hide from the people who are trying to repossess it. I have no idea. It's not up to us to decide who we give the food to. That's up to the Father. 600 bags of groceries twice a month. Then we had a homeless community that was across the street from us out there. How many remember Cowboy of those that were here? And I'd walk back there. Me and Matt would go back there sometimes. Did, we didn't take many people back there because it never felt quite, quite safe. But we'd go back there and we'd take water. We'd take things back into that community. And then Cowboy, this one gentleman that was back there, he was a homeless man and wore his cowboy hat. And he came, to the, he came and he visited one morning. And he walks in. He visits. And I called him out and I prayed for him during the service. We just spoke to him. and Funny kind of guy. Good guy. He kept coming. He kept coming. And I saw his faithfulness. So I pulled him aside one day after service and I said, Cowboy, I said, why are you homeless? And he told me the story why I was homeless. And I, as I listened to that story, I knew immediately it, it's our responsibility. We need to help you overcome the lies that people have told you for so long. So we got him a rented trailer. We rented him a trailer, mobile home. We got him a job. He kept coming to work. We put clothes on him. I mean, he kept coming to church. He started tithing. And he was faithful, and we watched Cowboy's life dramatically change. And then one day I didn't see him anymore. Went back into the woods. He wasn't in the woods. Couldn't find Cowboy anywhere. My wife and I were driving home from church one Sunday afternoon. I saw him sitting on a bench beside the road, looked as bad or worse than I'd ever seen him. I pulled the car over and I went over to the bench and I said to him, I said, Cowboy, where you been? What's going on? He said, you know, after the church helped me. After the church helped me get a job. They helped me get, pay, uh, get a, a mobile home where I could pay rent. And he paid it. We didn't have to keep paying it. He got a job and took care of it. We just got him started. Give him an opportunity to, to believe. I said, where you been, cowboy? And he said, after you guys did that, my father saw me one day and he said, wow, you're clean. What's happening? And he said, I told him the story of the rock and what the rock of Central Florida has done for me. And my dad immediately said, I can't believe that you have stooped so low to let the church provide for you. And he said, so I could never go back. Let me just tell you in that, don't let anybody steal your vision. Amen. When God gives you vision... Don't let anybody come in and make you believe for even a second that it's not real. Right. January 1st of 2002, one year later, the same couple invites my wife and I to again drive out to go to Dixie, Cro uh, Dix yeah, Dix Dixie Cross Road and get some rock shrimp, which we loved again. We remembered that the last time we'd been there a few more times, but January the 1st, one year later exactly, we're driving out there, we pass this land, no for sale sign, nothing. Just woods, just, I didn't even know how much land was here. I had no idea. I just knew there was a big patch of woods sitting out here on the side of the highway. And I looked over at that land and I said to my wife and those people that were with us, I, I said, there's that same land. That's a great place for the Rock Central Florida. Nothing has changed. We come home that night. It's dark. We get home, put the kids to bed. The next morning I get up, I'm stirred in my spirit. 
very stirred in my spirit. I said to my wife, I said, we got to put the kids in the minivan. we got to go to that property. i got to see that property. I just got to walk on it. I got to see what's on that property. We pull up in the minivan out here beside Highway 46, which again was nothing. There was nothing out here. Nothing. Pull up out there, and when we pull in, there's a lady walking down the, the front of the property. She's about every 20 yards or 30 yards, whatever it was, she's putting up a for sale sign with a phone number on it. I look over at my wife. Hmm. Wait, stay with the kids. <laughs> I get out of my car and I go over to this lady and I said, ma'am, a year ago we drove by this property. It wasn't for sale. Told her what happened. I said, last night we drive by this property. It wasn't for sale. I come out here this morning and you're putting up four sale signs. I said, do you own it? She said, no, but my dad does. I said, I'm going to buy it. She said, you are? I said, I am. She said, you have to call my dad. And that was his number on the thing. I got back in the car. We called his, called the man's, his name was Noah DeFalco. Called him up. He lived in Ocala on a ranch. I called him up. I said, Mr. DeFalco, this is Steve Parker. I'm st sitting outside your property right now on Highway 46. I said, your daughter's here. She told me to call you. I said, I want to buy your land. He said, oh, that's wonderful. $1.1 million. It's yours. We had $600 in the bank. I said, Mr. DeFalco, I'll give you 300000 for that land. I just picked a number. And it wasn't going to be $1.1 million. I cannot even honestly say that's the number God gave me. But I had to sound like I knew what I was talking about. I said, Mr. DeFalco, I'll give you 300000 He said, what do you want to do with this land? I said, I'm going to build a church on it called the Rock Central Florida. He said, do you like trees? I said, I love trees. He said, are you going to save the trees? I said, I'll save as many as I can. But we're going to take some down because we're going to build a building. We're going to build a campus for the people of Central Florida to be a part of what God is doing in our lives. And he said, well, Steve, I really appreciate it, but I'm not into that God stuff. So when you get 1.1 million, you call me back. And I said, Mr. DeFalco, true story, I said, Mr. DeFalco, whether you sell me that land or the man that you sell that land to sells me that land, I promise you I'm going to own that land and I'm going to build a church on that property. And he said, when you get 1.1 million, you call me back. <laughs> we hung up. I called my pastor up in uh, Apostle Ball up in Panama City. And I said, sir, we found this land, and I know it's the purpose of God. I know it is. I know it is. This is what the conversation was like. He said, this is what I want you to do. He said, I want you right now, get off this phone call, and I want you to call that man, and I want you to tell that, ask that man if you can go sit down with him at his table and tell him your story. I thought, I didn't want to know my story. My own kids are tired of hearing my story. But I knew, I know what it is to not only be faithful to my heavenly Father, but to be faithful to those He has put yes. in authority over me. Amen. I said, yes, sir. I got off the phone. I called him up. I said, Mr. DeFalco, this is Steve Parker again. He said, you got $1.1 million? I said, no, but I just want to tell you what happened. I called, and I told him, Pastor. I said, I called my pastor. He told me I need to come sit with you and just tell you my story. He said, Steve, I live in Ocala. If you can drive here today, I'll give you five minutes. I said, I'll take it. I got in our minivan. I drove to Ocala. I pulled up on his massive ranch, horses everywhere. Get through the gate, go down that long gravel driveway. I get up to the front door. I knock on his door. He opens the door with a banana in his hand. He says, come on in, have a seat. And we go sit at his little kitchen table. And he says, you got five minutes. And I begin to tell him, how God has moved in my life. I begin to tell Him the things that, to me, are miracles that the Father did in my life. How He saved me from me. And then how He planted me in this area. 
and my family. Begin to talk to him about what God had called us to. And the forgiveness that I had experienced so many times from the Father. And as I looked at this man, and tears are running down his eyes. He begins to write something on a piece, a napkin on his table. I have no idea what he's writing. He begins to write something on a napkin, and he slides that over to me, and he said, these are my terms. So I looked at the terms. When I looked at what was on that paper, he said $500,000. If you are qualified as a 501c3 organization, and you can give me $500,000 as a tax credit spread out over five years. I said, I can do all of that with $600 in the bank. <laughs> he didn't know that. He said, if you can come to me with $50,000 next week, one week from today, it's yours. I said, I'll see you next week. I stood up. That Sunday morning in front of the congregation that we had at the time, which was not many people, I stood up in front of that congregation and I shared with them the whole story. And I said, I can tell you, it's a word to me. I know this land belongs to us. It's bigger than our bank account. It's bigger than anything I've ever had to believe for before. But it's not bigger than God. So I'm going to receive an offering today. We need $50,000 next week. And I said, I'm going to receive an offering today. If you believe that God's called you to be a part of it, do so. If you do not believe that God's called you to be a part of it, that's okay too. Just pray for those of us that it is. We received that offering that day and received almost all that we needed for that down payment. And then we received the remainder of it from the Rock of Panama City. And that next week I went in there and I put that check for $50,000 in Noah DeFalco's hand. Signed the papers. Said the land is yours. That was in 2002. What's interesting is from, January, from 2001 to 2006 we did something in this ministry. Am I boring y'all? Because I don't want to bore you. From 2001 to 2006, we did something in this ministry that I believe was a catalyst, was seed for what the Father wanted to do long term. In July of 2001, I was sitting with a friend of mine and I said to him, I said, I refuse to be anyone's God and I refuse to be anyone's Holy Spirit. Not everyone in the church, but there were people that were beginning to gather with us that looked to me for all their needs. I had somehow become their substitute for the Father, their substitute for the Holy Spirit. And I also knew substitutes always come up short. Substitutes are never fully qualified to fulfill the role. And Holy Spirit said to me, He said, this is what I want you to do. I want you to tell the people that for the month of July, the church is not meeting. Tell every family to meet in their homes. Minister to one another. Pray together. Lean on God. They gotta, they're going to have to trust the Father. Not because you're teaching them, but because they're digging in all by themselves. And then on the first Sunday of August, come back. i got to tell you, I had faith. I believed the word of the Lord was absolute. But I was also afraid. Remember, faith is not the absence of fear. And fear is not the absence of faith. If that were true, then Jesus is a liar. Because when he was in the garden, he said, I have faith that if I go to the cross, mankind has an opportunity to be redeemed. Yet I'm sweating great drops of blood. If it's possible, let it go to somebody else. Nevertheless, not my will, but yours be done. And I know in religion, that's what they teach. Oh, you, if, you, if you're afraid, you don't have faith. That's, that's, that's a lie against the truth. Faith is not the absence of fear, and fear is not the absence of faith. The difference is, if all I have is fear, then I do not have faith to receive the gift and the promise. In the middle of my fear, if I have faith, I still receive the promise. So we engaged, went through July. I didn't know what to expect on August 1st, that first Sunday in August. When they came in, they filled that house up the first week of August. We grew 
exponentially. Every time, every July for seven years, we closed the church, closed the doors, told the people, stay home, minister to one another, grow together, let the Father speak to you, learn from that, and then come back and let's grow each other up. We did that for seven years. Experienced supernatural growth every time. As we continued to grow in 2004, we moved out of the storefront and we moved into the Strang Media Complex over here on Reinhardt Road. And then in 2005, we began looking for a bank and a builder to put a building on this property. As we began to look for the bank and the builder, every, every bank that I went to said, no, 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 you guys are not big enough. You, you know, we just don't have the confidence. You know, you don't have enough in your bank account to do what we need you to do. So um, it's, we're not going to finance you. And then I spoke with somebody, and he said, I want to introduce you to a, to a Baptist man that is the president of, used to be a little bank, first commercial bank down in Lake Mary. He said, I want to introduce you to Charles Prescott. I want you to meet him. If anybody will loan to you and understand what it is you're doing, it'll be him. So I called up Charles Prescott and I said, Charles, this is Steve Parker. I'm the pastor of the Rock Central Florida. This is what we want to do. Nobody will talk to me. And I was told to call you. I said, can I come and meet with you? He said, no, but I'll meet you at your property. He said, let me meet you where your land is. I said, yes, sir. We get out here. We meet at the land. We park our cars out there in the front. We walk up on this land. We begin to walk around. He said, totally Un, not banking related. He said, tell me what you're going to do with this land. This is the president of the bank. We're walking around. I said, I'm going to build a church right here. Eventually, we're going to have a school. We're going to have a preschool. Eventually, we're going to have a gymnasium. Eventually, we're going to have, and I begin to share with him so that we can do this and this and this and begin to lay out the vision before him. He said, do you believe you can do all of that with the people that you have? And I said, no. Nope. But I don't have to do it with the people that we have. Because more are coming. But I said, we have to provide a place for them to come. He said, Steve, I don't know what it's going to take. He didn't even ask me what we had in the bank yet. He said, I don't know what it's going to take. But we're going to finance your bank or your building. He said, get your things in order. We're going to meet again and we're going to finance your, your building. Within a month, we had signed on the dotted line for a building. That was in 2005. On April the 8th, 2007, we had our first service in this building. It looked very different than it does now. But in April 8th, on April 8th, 2007, we had our first service in this building packed from stem to stern in this place. We had 301 people in this building. Today, I don't know how many we can get in this room, but today we have about 200, a little over 270 people that are active family members in this congregation. Two thousand nine, the vision continued to grow. There were people in this house, in this particular instance, Liz Darnell, that shared a like vision regarding education. I didn't know what to do with education, but Liz did. We sat down together, had a meeting, and she said, "We can do this, and we can do this, and we can do this." And I said, "Liz, can you make that happen?" She said, "I can do it." And with her anointing, anointing before qualities anointing before knowledge and with her anointing she came in and she began to organize and structure and together we created a place where children can be educated in a faith based community can learn and can grow together that was 2009 2014 then kids rock my wife came to me one day and her and Tamara had been talking. Her and Tamara Phillips. And they'd been chatting wherever they were chatting over coffee. Dunkin' Donuts does things to people. Oh, pancakes. Yeah, pancakes. Syrup, man. Syrup. It's intoxicating. So she said, babe, we can do this. I know it. it's, it's time. It's time we need to do this. I didn't know how to do all that, but I said, go for it. Kids Rock Early Learning Center was born in 2014, or 2000, yeah, 2015, 15, 14. And then in 2015, because of growth again, 
We reconstructed this facility, knocked out things, moved things, changed things, shifted things. I mean, this building looks nothing like it did on April the 8th, 2007. You wouldn't even recognize it. It's not the same building. Added the modulars that are out here now to provide. It's where our children are right now, and Kids Rock are over there in the modulars at this very moment. During the years, all these years, as we continued to grow, we would fill the building and we would go to multiple services. Several times we went to multiple services. You know the story. During those times, we would do it and we would go. And if you know me, you've got to know this. I love ministry. I love ministry. I look forward every week to getting together with you and being able to teach. Because equipping people in the kingdom of God is my heart and soul. But with two services, we'd have one and then rush everybody out and give 15 minutes for everybody else to get in and get started at a certain time. And everybody's scrambling around. And I felt like I knew some and not all. I felt like I, in the second service I was having an affair on the first one. In the first service I was having an affair on the second service. It's true. So finally, the last time I so I told my wife I was on the way to the church, and I said, this is the last time I will ever do two services. I said, I do not believe. It might be God's will for a lot of people. It is not God's will for Steve Parker. Because I have come to the place where I no longer enjoy ministry. What I once enjoyed and could release freely, now I feel like I have to work for every week. Relationships are being lost. And I stood up and I said that. I said, today's our last day with two services. If we can't fit everybody in the building, that's not on me. We can stand. If you really want to be here, you really want to come, you can stand around the walls. You can cram in. We'll do the best we can with the space we have until we can do something else. But I am not doing two services again. And I can tell you from, the, from day one, Holy Spirit said to me, told me, and I've said to you a thousand times that are a part of this house, I've said to you, we will never have a building that is only used once or twice a week. Churches should be ashamed of themselves for building these massive structures where people can meet one time a week and then the rest of the week they can't do anything with it. It's not good stewardship. I'm not here to talk about them. I'm here to talk about us. In 2021, with all the passion that is present in this building, all the anointing present in the people that call the Rock of Central Florida home, whether it be in the church or the academy or the ELC, in 2020 we were hit with a wave all around the world with this thing called, I don't know, you might have heard of it, called COVID. And this thing swept around the world and it did whatever, all the damage that it did and all the things that were said and done. I'm not here to argue about what, was, what were lies and what were truths. All I know is what was truth to us. And truth to us was we were not going to waver from our purpose. So during COVID, when daycares and preschools and schools were closing down all everywhere, we chose not to. In fact, in our preschool, not only did we not close down, but we called the city of Sanford and we let them know that any first responders, whether it's policemen, firemen, healthcare workers, whoever they are, any first responders, until further notice, tuition is half price. We want to make sure that you are able to do your job and you're able to afford to do it. As a result of that, in 2021, we received from the city of Sanford an official Rock of Central Florida Day. If you don't know that, in Seminole County, there is an official Rock of Central Florida Day every October. We have continued to grow and have been faithful stewards of our current facilities that we are in right now. And we have been at capacity for several years. The Rock Academy and the Early Learning Center, both have an 18-month waiting list just to get in. So I say all that to say this, men, 
women, children, and families, every single person who is a part of the Rock of Central Florida, who is a part of this community. It's time to build. Building requires faith and commitment. If we all do what we can, what we build will provide not only for us, but for the families that we have yet to meet. Because there are more coming. And when I think back on the words of Isaiah... He said, people, you might not see it now, but I'm sending what you do not yet see. Expand the tent pegs. Enlarge your borders. Strengthen your pegs. I want to read to you in 2 Corinthians chapter 9 this morning, so bear with me as I do. It says this, says, well, let me give you a little preface. The Corinthian people here are excited about what God was doing among them. Uh, And the Apostle Paul had to speak to that because in their excitement there was a lot of zeal, a lot of passion, but he needed to bring some instruction to that. So let me read beginning with verse 1 in 2 Corinthians chapter 9. It says this, it says, Now it is superfluous for me to write to you about the ministry for the saints. For I know your readiness, of which I boast about you to the people of Macedonia, saying that Achaia has been ready since last year, and your zeal has stirred up most of them. You're very excited about what's to come. But he said, I'm sending the brothers so that our boasting about you, talking about how passionate you are about all that God is doing, may not prove empty in this matter so that you may be ready as I said you would be. Otherwise, if some Macedonians come with me and find that you're not ready, we would be humiliated to say nothing of you for being so confident. So I, Paul, thought it necessary to urge the brothers to go on ahead to you and arrange in advance for the gift that you have promised so that it may be ready as a willing gift and not as an exaction. Very important statement. So that it may be ready as a willing gift and not as an exaction. Verse 6. The point is this. Whoever sows sparingly will also reap sparingly, and whoever sows bountifully will also reap bountifully. Each one must give as he has decided in his heart, not reluctantly or under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver. And God is able to make all grace abound to you, so that having all sufficiency in all things at all times, you may abound in every good work. As it is written, He has distributed freely. He has given to the poor. And His righteousness endures forever. He who supplies seed to the sower and bread for food will supply and multiply your seed for sowing and increase the harvest of your righteousness. You will be enriched in every way to be generous in every way, which through us will produce thanksgiving to God. For the ministry of this service is not only supplying the needs of the saints, but it is also overflowing in many thanksgiving to God. By their approval of this service, they will glorify God because of your submission that comes from your confession of the gospel of Christ and the generosity of your contribution for them and for all others, while they long for you and pray for you because of the surpassing grace of God upon you. Thanks be to God for His inexpressible gift. Paul was saying, it is good to be excited about something, but it is even better to be a part of it. Do you hear me this morning? He said, it is good to get excited about it, but it is even better to be a part of it. So what now for you and me? I said it a moment ago. I say it again. It's time to build. What does that mean? I'm going to read it to you like I sent it to you in the letter. We are raising funds now in preparation to begin this expansion with a goal of $700,000 by the end of this year. We have created a building fund that is for that purpose, and I invite everyone to participate in our growth. Each time you give using the building fund, 
Your donation will be designated for this building project, and it is also tax deductible. So what we've done, I have never, I don't, I think outside of receiving funds for the playground, I don't recall ever. In fact, my wife said to me this morning on the way here, because I am a... I'm not uncomfortable receiving tithe and offering ever. But I'm not one to ask for above and beyond that. Outside of saying, what is the Father saying to you? I'm not a beggar. I'm a son. I don't appreciate it. When preachers get up and say, there's 10 people that are going to give 1,000, 5,000, 10,000. Every time I hear them say it, I say, you are practicing witchcraft from behind your pulpit. That's manipulation. I'm not here to manipulate today. I'm here to present an opportunity to a people who believe that the Rock of Central Florida is your home. God has called you here and He is doing great things and He wants to do even greater things with you and me in Central Florida. There are people we've not yet met. Students and children and babies that are yet to come. Each of them represent another person who has the potential to become the voice of God in whatever house, home, neighborhood, job, school that they exist in. Each of them. So I'm doing something very different today. I ask the pastors to put in the back of every seat a, an index card. I just asked them to do this this morning. But in the back of each seat, there are a couple of index cards. It doesn't say anything on it, but I'm going to tell you what it is. It is a commitment card. I want you to do only what the Father tells you to do. And my wife and I are going to be first in stepping out in faith. And I can tell you right now, our commitment to give by the end of this year, above and beyond tithe and offering, that's not your tithe and offering. The building fund is not your tithe and offering. It is past that. But my wife and I are committing $20,000 by the end of this year to this cause. Because I believe that what God has asked us to do, He has also enabled us to do it. So we've placed these index cards in the seat back. They're commitment cards. What I'd like for you to do, I'm not begging. There's no compulsion. There's no imposition. If you believe you're a part of this and that this is a part of who you are and you're a part of the future and the growth of the Rock of Central Florida, I would ask that you will take one of those commitment cards, write your first and last name on it. Write what you're committing to for the building fund by the end of the year. And then at the end of the service, in just a few moments, I'm going to receive those cards. No one else will know, but I'm going to receive those cards. This week we'll put that in Planning Center, which is what tracks your giving. And you'll be able to watch. Every time you give to the building fund, you'll begin to watch that. And you will also be able to see what's been contributed to the $700,000 goal Amen. to raising these funds. Now why? $700,000. God has been good and faithful to this ministry. You have been faithful to this ministry. Amen. We have funds in place today to move forward building a shell of a building. It would be four walls, a lobby, and two bathrooms. We have the funds in place to do that and then build it out later. I am just not, I just don't believe that's the purpose of God for you and me. We are $700,000 away from being able to build a building that would immediately facilitate the needs, not only of what we currently have, but what is to come. A 13,000 square foot multi-purpose facility, the middle of that space would be the gymnasium. We would use that space on Sundays. This building would become the education center. 
all of this building would be converted to the educational facility. That building would become both the church and education. It would have classrooms all along the sides of the building, but in the middle of it, it is a gymnasium with volleyball courts, uh, with uh, 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 basketball goals. And then on Sunday mornings, it would, chairs would be set up and we would have church and it would provide seating for 600 people in that facility. Well, right now, it's vision. Right now, it's vision. In vision, all by itself, produces nothing. I can look and I can watch it happen, or I can choose to be a part of what's happening. So, Father, I'm paying attention to you. I'm paying attention to you. Do not give what God has not put in your heart. Do not commit to what God has not put in your heart. I believe He's assigning people for this purpose. Maybe every single person under the sound of my voice. You that are watching online, you're not excluded. You may say, I'll never use that gymnasium. It's not about the gymnasium. It's not about the facility. It's about whether or not you believe in what God's doing here. If you are one of those people God is speaking to, be faithful in your giving. Pay attention to the commitment that you make and that He puts in your heart. If you're not, rejoice in us. Rejoice with us in God's expansion. Amen? Amen. I remind you of Paul's words. He said, each one must give as he has decided in his heart, not reluctantly, nor under compulsion. But God loves a cheerful giver. I want no one to give today. If you believe for a second that all Steve Parker is doing is standing in front of you and asking for money, you've missed it. You're not the one. We don't even want your money. But if you hear the voice of God within my voice today, and you can say, I know that what God's doing, because I look around and I see what God's doing. I come here in the middle of the week and I see all that God's doing. And I believe that God's in this. I invite you to join me and others. Proverbs 24, verses 3 and 4 say this. says, By wisdom a house is built, and by understanding it is established. By knowledge the rooms are filled with all precious and pleasant riches. Riches not being money, riches being a people called to the purpose of God. So, I would ask at this time, if the Father's speaking to you, and He's put something in your heart, I would ask that you fill out one of those commitment cards, and I'm going to receive those in a few moments. But before I do that, I want to open the floor for questions. If you have any questions, and I am capable, if I'm capable of answering those questions, I will. Does anyone have a question? Any questions? Miss Liz. Um, just a question. Just a question about this current facility here. Will does the budget allow for this to be reconfigured too, or is that a separate building project? In the seven hundred thousand. Okay. Yes. Outside of the seven hundred thousand, we would have to do temporary, like we're doing right now. We need to move from temporary to a sense of permanency. And um, there's a, there's, there is change a coming. I choose to be part of that. Anybody else? Anybody else? Any questions? Oh, let, him, let him get you this mic so it's on the recording as well. We like to record all the questions so we can hold it against you later. Uh, all right. So um, my question is, um, can we use the facility or the status of the, of the church for fundraising um, in order to reach these goals? Because some, some, some goals may be aggressive, and, and we may not necessarily have the money, but we do have the, the will to put in the extra work to make the extra yes. money. Yes, we can. And actually, Chino, you're an incredible resource for some of those things. So I'm very open uh, to what those would be. All that we, and I wouldn't worry about this with you, I might with other people, but a lot of times, what I've never allowed is banks to come in and do what they call a um, uh, uh, campaign, where they come in and they stand in front of people and they basically tell people, if you'll do this, you'll get this interest, you'll get this, you'll get this return. I don't allow that. So I wouldn't do anything that violates what I believe are kingdom principles um, related to 
building this because when we, this thing, when we build this, and we are building this, when this is built, I want to be able to look at that building with every single one of you and say, and God did this yes. through a faithful people. Um, my, my secondary question is, and, and this is for you and then also for the congregation, uh, some of you work for businesses that match donations. Um, will you be open to some of the businesses Absolutely. Um, matching our contribution? And if that is so, it needs to be done strategically so we can, you know, well, sometimes you have to actually be an employer. So, you know, we're kind of limited. But if, if you don't have to be an employer for that corporation to match that donation, let's work together to capitalize off of that opportunity. That's good. Yeah. Well, I'll just say this. The only funds that I refuse to receive are the ones that come begrudgingly. If someone says, you know what, I'm just going to do it just because, you know, and whatever, I'm not going to, if I know of that, I won't receive it. The only funds I refuse to receive are those that do not come from a good and honest heart. So, yes, every other way. Thank you, Chino. And I know you're a great resource for that, and we will have a deeper discussion because we're full speed into this. Anybody else? Any other questions regarding what's ahead? Because I can tell you we're already in process. I've already met with bank with a bank. We've already we've already got that part secured. What we don't have secured is what we can build because it's determined by what we have available. But we're in full full process. I can tell you the goal is a uh, timeline if we were to begin um, even by the end of this year if we were begin, going to begin building by the end of this year my goal no matter what is by the beginning of the school year 2025, we are complete. So that's a year and a half, 18 months, that we would be complete. It would take a miracle. We can do it. Anybody else? Any other questions? Well, I want to pray. I want to pray. So stand with me if you would, please, this morning. I want to thank you, first of all, for your faithfulness over the years. I want to thank you because you're, you're a people who are generous and you are... You are amazing. When I said to the bank that we were speaking with, um, I shared this story with a few of you already, but when I was talking to them uh, a couple of weeks ago and they said, what is the percentage of people that give faithfully tithe and offering at the Rock of Central Florida? And I said, over 80% of our people give faithfully. He could not even believe what I said. He said the national average in a church is 2%. Because people have lost faith. People have lost, they've lost faith. They don't believe in what they're putting their, sowing their seed in. They have to believe. So I'm going to pray with you today. Before you bring your cards, I want to pray. And I want you to hear the voice of God. I want you to hear His voice. I want you to honor it. And I know... I'm not even, I want you to hear. You hear. Father, only you are capable of raising up a people that have the kind of eyes to see and the kind of ears to hear that this people has. Only you are able to, in the middle of a situation that looks absolutely possible, make it possible. Every, when it looks like it's not even remotely possible, we would not be able to. You make the impossible possible. Yes, you do, Father. When we saw this land and it had no number attached to it, had no idea what the value was, yet you made it possible. I've come to know you in my spirit in a way when you move me, I know you have moved me at the right time. Right. And I'm thankful today that you move this people. Yes, Father. Speak to us today, to each one. I know what you've put in my heart for my wife and for me. I ask today that you will just as clearly put it in the hearts of each of these that you have called to be a part of this, this growth, this time, this season. Father, I honor you today. We honor you today. Thank you for your goodness. Make clear what might not be clear, let the words that I've spoken today 
As each one has heard them, I pray that they have heard your voice within my voice. I pray that I didn't get in the way of anything that you wanted to release to this people. You are faithful, and we honor you today. In Jesus' name.